Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for investing your time with us today. Today, we have a fantastic panel of female artists, and we will be talking about art and freedom in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. The International Association of Female Artists, IAFA, is the world's only international organization for women artists. Its membership includes video artists, filmmakers, photographers, actresses, performance artists, folk artists, musicians, creative, creative writers. The mission of the International Association of Female Artists is to establish a platform and create a community for helping women artists worldwide. IAFA is hosting a series panel discussion collected, collectively titled Artists Without Borders. Beginning in May 22nd, each panel will be held with a specific theme and limited to eight artists. While the world experiences globe strife, many people are living in isolation. We will discuss, as artists, how we see the world during these trying times. The pl plagues changed the imag imagination of the world. It changed every culture that it's passed through. We will touch upon current challenges to personal freedom, artistic freedom, privacy issues, health care, among other topics. We are welcoming participation of female artists around the world to weave in. Please contact us at info at iafartists.org or any of the board members to express your interest. Today's topic is freedom. Artists always play critical roles in the only real freedom, which is freedom from fear. Artistic freedom includes the right of the citizens to participate in, participate in culture life. Creative freedom is a key co component of the well-being of our societies. The current crisis highlights once again the power of art and culture to build and maintain social ties and their unprecedented constraints. In the current health crisis, feelings of people, including many artists, are not only enduring a financial collapse, but they are also giving up some of their fundamental freedom is to preserve our health. However, no one outside ourselves can rule us in wonderly. When we know this, we become free. Today, we will hear from eight amazing artists to share their thoughts. They are Liz Dodson, Alan Shalice, Jane Guo, The Night Black, Jill Stevens, Laurel O'Gorman, Roy Luo, and Ming Tang. We will ask each artist to share her thoughts on the topic of freedom. Then we will have an open discussion as a group. My name is Liz Dodson, mm -hmm. and um, I get, I'm going to be the president of the IAFA, International Association of Female Artists. And I'm a visual artist. I was saying perhaps above all, the pandemic has illuminated how cramped the American conception of freedom has become. Mm. So this is forcing us to kind of take a look at freedom from the standpoint of how we are leaving our, living our lives today because of the pandemic. And as so many decisions that we make are uh, stay at home, and with that stay at home, we're, um, we're under the uh, direction of, of our government at this stage. And um, perhaps I'll just leave it at that. That's where I feel our cramped uh, style of freedom is with this stay at home order. And um, I think I, I'm with a majority of the people who who want to stay at home rather than go out and, and risk the danger of going against what the scientists 
they recommend for us. I think they have the right idea and we should um, abide by their direction at this point in time. And, and the question is, does this freedom mean that we are having freedom at your expense or freedom or vice versa? Your freedom is at my expense. So poor people wrestle with these questions daily as they struggle to buy. There's a luxury to the idea of freedom when it comes associated with uh, a mask, with wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Pretty much a luxury. Um, there's a luxury to the idea of freedom when it's associated with uh, social distancing, when so many are not able to be socially distant. Um, so it's it's a very complex question. I don't see it as a simple reductive answer of black or white. And um, I'm excited about the possibility of hearing from everyone their lens on this particular issue. But I'm still surprised that people, you know, you know, went out without masks and uh, and uh, they have to. Um, you know, for propaganda, like uh, they are, they try to, you know, I understand their feelings. They want to go back to work. They want to make a living. But, uh, you know, life is life. Life is very important to a person, you know, and uh, if you don't care, you can spread to another people. So it's very irresponsible, you know, responsible. Everybody should take the responsibility for yourself or for others in this, you know, terrible, terrible time. I agree uh, with Ellen. This is very, very challenging and uh, complex. So initially, when I was thinking about freedom, I was thinking about a much smaller world, just more my world of fear, and I felt kind of manic, uh, and it harmed my art practice. I was doing well, and getting exhibits and uh, our work was flourishing and then <laughs> so now I'm trying to figure out a way to get it back and get and be expressive. Uh, it also is the pandemic is showing American culture and all of its flaws and the individualism and how damaging individualism is because we we don't do things for the greater good. We think of ourselves first. So I have a whole list of ideas on um, projects to do. I have three groupings. One is just for fun, playful. It, I call it like doodling, just small pieces of paper uh, and print, prints that were failed or were experiments and I'm just painting on them. I don't think about it, I just do it, you know, free myself. Mm -hmm. I have a political set as well and then uh, a bigger, longer term project. And what I would love, I have relatives in Sweden, I have former colleagues in Italy and Ireland and Brussels and France uh, and Japan. And I love the aspect of the internet that I can still maintain relationships even though I haven't seen them in 20 years. So I like this group as well because of sharing those ideas and feelings and, and have that global connection. I think it is, it brings me hope and helps me survive the hard times of being isolated. I was just, I was thinking about the fact, I went to a grocery store this morning and everybody was wearing masks except for one young man. And I figured, I figured that he, I mean, he looked very well to do. He was maybe 30 and so on. And I think he probably just flaunts the recommendation, but the, the problem is probably his friends do the same thing. So if none of his associates wear masks, he's probably the most dangerous of all. Um, so, I mean, he, he felt, he must have felt that he had the freedom to neglect that recommendation because in stores, everybody's supposed to wear 
the mask. I think that's what uh, Lynette was getting at when she said, um, you know, this rugged individualism is something that we have in America. We think about ourselves, but sometimes we forget about other people. And the whole thing with the mask is to protect others. So, so I agree, rugged individualism isn't the best. Yeah, I, I, I do think it's um, kind of not stressed enough that the, the mask is for others and that we are thinking and the whole idea of really being compassionate for other people is not, um, does not seem to be um, promoted. It's like we don't promote that. And of course the president as the leader of our country doesn't promote the idea of remember that you're doing this for somebody else who might not be as vulnerable as you are or, or might be more vulnerable than you are. So yeah. I think that that in itself is a whole question. I, I think that um, this um, protesting uh, these things has uh, political, um, partially has political reason. It's involved, I think, with me all the Trump's uh, uh, election, that uh, he badly need uh, the good results for this year. This year is terrible for him, but everything's going down in employment, the economic, they're all like uh, going to the bottom of the drain, even in the stock market. So uh, it's not good for him to get elected. It doesn't have a <laughs> good thing to say. So the one thing I think of this, uh, because it's all from the, um, I mean, <laughs> not raising the uh, political uh, question, but I'm just saying that uh, I think the uh, Republican organized partially, uh, you, you can say, that kind of, uh, of course, there's people, you know, American uh, Western culture, that um, um, the tradition uh, of is of independence and individual. There's uh, American if they all want to be like they all want to be like Daniel Boone, and to go their <laughs> way, <laughs> be independent. Well, people still have the right to protest. However, there's also freedom. Um, there's also being aware of the common good. And that's what public health is, as opposed to individual medicine. You know, medicine is concerned about a patient. Um, but public health is an epidemiology. It's the greater good. And so that's, that's the most important thing, I believe, <clears throat> During a pandemic, it's the greater good that is more important than individual um, rights. They can still protest, but the greater good is the important thing. I think that that is part of what I was trying to say about freedom has a responsibility. Yeah. That, um, they can take the, they have the right to protest. But the question is, do they have the right to protest and not respect a guideline that says you need to keep social distance and wear a mask? Do they have the right to, uh, so I think that's more of the question. You have a right for your opinion, but under the guidelines that have been proposed, you're keeping, uh, respecting the vulnerability of other people. Yes. That seems like going beyond. And, and in a sense, I kind of like the idea of, of some of the countries that do a lockdown with respect to, we will take care of you, but this is where we are going to do a lockdown because we are taking care of you. And our responsibility is to take care of everyone, including those people who don't have um, 
who are vulnerable and who might be more susceptible. So we're going to do this, but then take responsibility for making that decision instead of allowing people to not know, uh, not be sure about the guidelines or to cross the guidelines at the expense of others, which certain areas of the country have done that more than others. I think the United States and individualism is a false freedom because you are taking a short-term view, my freedom, my life, I can do what I want, but there will be, because of um, not taking responsibility for the complete ramifications of your behavior, we will suffer way more than other countries and cultures because of that. And we do not agree on any issues and we fight about them. And what will happen is that those, there will be many innocent people whose lives are lost because of the behavior of the arrogant and selfish, um, self-interested people, or those who believe they're right no matter what. And, um, I think that this century will be the century where America goes down. Every big culture that had global uh, power and global colonialism had their day in the sun. <laughs> and then there was the end. Whether it's fast or slow, no one is uh, a celebrity forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think this is where the weakness of our value system is. Uh, We've met our match where the pandemic does not care. Uh, it will do what it will do. And if you do not listen and learn, uh, and, and it's changing, it's uh, mutating. So if you don't keep observing and learning and trying and changing your, being willing to learn and change and modify your behavior, you will be the loser. Despite thinking that you're winning in the short term, you know, I got to do what I wanted today, you know. So that's my perception. Is they will, we will lose in the end, uh, a greater percent of people and freedom on our economic freedom and our spiritual freedom and our social freedom. Well, what, what Lynette says is true in regard to the pandemic. But for instance, individual freedom, well, I chose a career that's a non-traditional female career. And that was an individual freedom and I was able to do it. I'm retired now, so. But that's just an example of an individual choice, even though I'm female, you know. Um, so sometimes it can work to our benefit, but in the case of a pandemic, hey, you know, it's different. We're all in this together, like, like the signs say. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so the greater good, quote, trumps the individual freedom. I think I hate to use that word, but. <laughs> so uh, my theory is, uh, I think uh, freedom is uh, most uh, um, most uh, um, cherish uh, things in the world, but the price is death or near death. America, I think at first, no, many many people don't know uh, the, the dangerous because everyone don't use the mask. Even some people uh, China, from Chinese, they use the mask. Some people be beaten by some person. This is. Uh, fault of government, I think. Yeah, it's, it's Trump said, don't use the mask, just wash your hand. It's very ridiculous. Because yeah. now, now this is, you don't use the mask, you just wash your hand. I think it is very fault, big fault. People do listen. They're, 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 therefore, if the government should say something, should be really careful, you know, whenever you say it, yeah, people yeah. believe you. Yeah. Right. So I think America too much believes the government more than Chinese. <laughs> no, no. It's really, it's really. Uh, 
Uh, huge now. Chinese now don't uh, believe the government, but America live, trust their government. It's different. Chinese, Chinese you, don't, don't believe the government. Chinese, you don't believe the government, but... Uh, yes, really. You cannot do anything. You cannot go out. But here, you but believe the government. Many, many, many people critic government. Many. So government, a few people. I talk about some peace person. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, majority, majority still listen to the government. I think, first of all, as, as an American growing up in this country, um, I probably have a very different attitude than someone from another country. So that's the bottom line, I think, in a lot of the thinking here. I don't have anything to compare it to except how I live here. <clears throat> and I have been a loner for a long time, so I'm not feeling some of the um, loss, shall we say, as some people that are very social, uh, very, uh, people that are more outgoing. So to a certain extent, uh, this maybe isn't as hard on me, however, I do miss socialization, even on whatever level I've had it in the past. And I have many opinions about all that our government has dictated. But here in Minnesota, I feel that we have been very well led by Governor Walz. And um, uh, the, the people that go to the governor's mansion and protest I think to a certain extent, which someone mentioned earlier, they're incited to do so. It's organized probably around the country, and I don't doubt that. Um, <laughs> I just hope people can see through it. You know, I, I'm putting a lot of faith in people as this unfolds and where it goes from here. Um, so, in spite of my days where I'm very down and I've been unable to do artwork, I'm looking for how to see something brighter. And the only way I've found it so far is through nature. Nature has given me great hope and I, and I find that going out and walking has, um, has been a salvation. Um, I'm enjoying listening to everyone, all the different perspectives, because if you're isolated, your mind is not, you know, encompassing that, especially from learning about other countries. It's only what one hears on the news, but it's better to hear it from individuals. I kind of feel that um, the lockdown is necessary, has been necessary, because it's already been proven through the ages, you know, 1918, other times when there was a polio vaccine, China, that they know what they're doing behind the science of the lockdown. They know what they're doing behind the science of social distancing. They know what they're doing in China and the in the Asian countries behind the science of the mask, and uh, we are not necessarily following that to the degree that we need to. Um, I also believe in, as an artist, in suspending certainty. We don't. We have to go into that space of actually not knowing, and. Um, we're always quick as a people to rush to say, I have the answer and I have the, you know, and, and when we do that, like the people that are going out and saying that this is all wrong and this isn't the way to do this, but we really know when other countries have actually had the experience of having success in doing it a certain way. 
Um, so I, I'm interested in the questions and I'm interested in exploring um, and discussing and hearing other people's perspectives. Um, I think that's an important part of it, a part of the process. It also happened uh, in China because of their uh, pandemic, uh, this uh, virus, the virus started earlier. And uh, most people, lots of people healed from uh, this disease. But they have another challenge. So they can't, they, they can't survive in the neighborhood. Like a uh, whole neighbor would uh, curse them, uh, ask them to move. They don't want them in this, in this area anymore. And uh, they don't want to talk to them. They don't want to, they isolate them. Um, some few kids, uh, like, uh, people couldn't live anymore. Uh, even they survived from the virus, they couldn't survive from the social uh, criticize. In China? You're so, talking yeah, about in China. China? Yeah, some people suicide. Then a few people, they happen. It's uh, through, the, through the, you know, through the, um, People's uh, the uh, internet. Um, that's another uh, challenge. Um, probably not here yet, but in China it's very, very pretty big now. Like um, people, even their relatives, they they can't go anywhere. They can't contact anybody. They can't uh, have any social life anymore. Even they go to the store, the people would, you know leave them uh, immediately. It's sort of like a disease. They're, uh, they're being isolated. So are you saying you are you saying you uh, prefer uh, the Americans freedom? Instead I prefer the American freedom but uh, but I, 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 I hope everybody has self-respect you know respect yourself, respect other people. You, if you, even you healed, if you go out, you still wear a face mask. That's why I think face mask is very important. I think it's interesting that you say that people get ostracized. When I was in sixth grade, which was, I don't know, more than 50 years ago, um, I had a strep throat and I wasn't sick, but I was positive. And they kept me out for the whole entire I missed the whole entire fifth grade because my brother was sick and they tested both of us and we both were positive, except I wasn't sick, but I kept getting to be positive. So they kept me out of school. I couldn't play with anybody. I couldn't, it was just me. I was ostracized pretty much from everybody for the fifth grade. But um, what I think is that that was a different time. That was like in the 50s. And um, what we have come to in the last, I don't know, with newer medicine and antibiotics is that people don't have the same approach to being unwell. Uh, you'll often see somebody who's sick and they come to work two days later and they say, well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, contagious anymore, I'm on antibiotics, and I have to go back to work. So our culture is very much almost like into not being sick. You, you, you don't, you're kind of like, so, so people kind of not taking seriously when something affects their body is not unusual. I think that they don't take COVID 19 as serious maybe it should be taken and don't understand the implications of it so she just walks outside and says well i'm not sick even though her whole family is sick well it's not a big deal and um the doctors and the care systems will never say to you oh you've got this don't go to work for the next two weeks they they just give you the medication and you go home and you just, whenever you feel good. So the approach to the illness is also evident in our cultural systems in this country, which might've even been different 50 years ago when I was younger or 
you know, 80 years ago when my mom was younger. Does anybody else have any opinions about that? Yes. Don't you think that uh, this pandemic has changed everything in our culture regarding phone consultation instead of driving to the doctor's office? Right. Um, uh, the, the, way, the way we look at many, many things in our medical system has totally changed. And it, I don't think it's going to go back to the way it was. And in our school systems, total change. And they have to figure out a new way to do this. They can, there have been too many children in a classroom for too long, and they need to downsize their, their classrooms. There, there is so much that we have been forced to do that will have a lasting benefit a lasting benefit that will come out of this. I mean, it's horrible how to, you know, come to that point, but, um, but there are so many good things that will happen because of it. I was so much enjoying not having so much traffic in my neighborhood, and now um, when the bands are starting to lift, that traffic is coming back, but I believe you've probably all seen the accounts where, um, skies were clearer, uh, there was much less smog, yeah. everything for the environment was getting better. The water, the clarity, I, you know, the, the reports even Air. from Venice, Venice and the canals, how, how much clearer that was. And uh, I don't know, I, I want to focus on what is good, what is coming out of it that will truly change our society. Yeah. Um, no matter who's in power. <laughs> I think that what's interesting is the, the constant, the problem is that constant double message that is going on out there. Um, the, you know, as artists, we can create and visualize some of these things that we would like to see come can out I of them in, one point? in a positive way. Yeah, can I just add this one point? I just want to say that there's a, a difference between somebody being able to be let out of jail because of the coronavirus, that's one message, yet the president doesn't wear a mask. I mean, there's a, the COVID is dangerous enough for one thing, but not dangerous enough for another thing. There's that two messages, and that's what I'm saying. Double standards. Double standards, that's part of the issue. Mm -hmm of freedom is the double standard. Yeah, double so standard. I do think what Laurel said is really important though.